factor. Time 1's variance is 7.85. That's simply the squared value of the standard deviation. And we can see that it's going up linearly. Time 2's variance is 14.13, and time 3's variance is 16.67. And then we've got these different valued covariances on the off-diagonal elements of the variance-covariance matrix. Uh, and when the variances and the covariances are equal, you have something called compound symmetry. Uh, but SPSS doesn't test that assumption directly, even though that is the assumption of ANOVA. It tests it indirectly with the Mochley's test of sphericity, which is a slightly different test. It's testing um, that the, the difference between the differences is in the variances are equal. Anyway, I, I don't want to go too much into detail about what Mosh's test of sphericity is, uh, except to say that we don't want to reject it. And in this case, we rejected the null hypothesis that indirectly the variance-covariance matrix, this thing here, that the values are equal in the off-diagonal elements and that the values on the diagonal themselves are equal, and they're not. And they're usually not in practice. Usually the variances increase across time, and the covariance between the uh, variables decrease as you get further and further away from time one. So w there's not too much to worry about uh, when you reject Mochley's test of sphericity. Here's the significance value, p equal 0 0.000, or p less than 0 0.001. Mochley's F value and the chi-square values over here with degrees of freedom of 2. We rejected the null hypothesis. We cannot assume homogeneity of variance and covariances. But we do get some correction factors that help us feel more confident that we are going to make correct conclusions based on the main ANOVA result, which is in the next table, TESA within subjects effects. Now here's my main effect of practice effect. And when you, when you have a sphericity assumed, if you do not reject Mochley's uh, uh, test of sphericity, you can report this F value, 44.05, uh, with these degrees of freedom, 2, and 198 two degrees of freedom in the numerator and 198 in the denominator. And it's very statistically significant, p less than 0 0.001, and a partial eta squared of 0 0.308, which means that 31.8% of the variability in IQ scores is accounted for by the time period that was measured, time one, or time two, or time three. So that's a pretty big statistically, uh, it's a pretty big practical effect. 31% of the variability in IQ scores is accounted for by which time you took your IQ test, first, second, or third. Uh, but we rejected the null hypothesis, so we have to use either a greenhouse geyser uh, correction, the Hünfeldt, or the lower bound. Most people uh, report greenhouse geyser. It's probably 90% of people report greenhouse geyser. There are times where the um, you will get meaningful differences between the two between these three corrections for rejecting the the, you know, the assumption of uh, homogeneity of variance covariance matrix. Um, uh, there, I don't want to go too many details. It's related to how large your sample size is, how large the covariances are between your time one, time two, time three variables. Uh, but in this case, they're roughly the same. Uh, you can actually get uh, a, a clear um, idea by actually uh, pushing out the uh, number of decimal places that SPSS is reporting the um, p-values. I'm going to push it out to 20, and we can see uh, that um, the sphericity assumed is the most statistically significant. And because we rejected the not, we we did not satisfy the assumption of of Mochley's test of sphericity. Um, the p-values are less significant once we go to the corrections of greenhouse geyser, and and uh, even less significant for the lower bound um, test, which is probably the most robust in most cases. Most people, however, report greenhouse geyser, so we'd report with an F value of 44.05 and 1.61 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 159.78 degrees of freedom in the denominator, uh, we had a significance value of you know, well, well in excess of uh, P less than 0 0.01. But sometimes it'll be meaningful. It'll be something like P equal 0 0.01 versus 0 
zero um, three five or something like that. And sometimes it won't be statistically significant if you use the greenhouse geyser. Uh, but just in summary, if you reject the null hypothesis of te Mosh's tesisphericity, so if this is statistically significant, 